1999, I found myself praying a prayer. Well, more than praying, I was crying, God, how can I turn America back to God? I knew I had reached God for a moment of time and he had heard me. A couple weeks later, a woman came to me. I didn't know who she was and she said, you don't know who I am, but the Lord told me to pay your salary this year because you're gonna start something with the youth of America in prayer that will change the destiny of the nation. I didn't know who she was, but I took her money. She paid my salary for 15 years. She said to me, have you ever thought about putting young people on the mall in DC? Like promise keepers put a million men. And I said, ma'am, I prophesied it two years ago. She said, I'll give you $100,000 to start it. Yesterday, 22 years later, 400,000 had gathered and now a new generation with a spiritual son and daughter, Brian. And we believe we're in a shifting of a new generation into something that was extraordinary. Listen to me. At age 12, my son, Jesse, came to me and said, how old do you have to be? Now, he actually had a dream in which two gangs were fighting, the God gang and the devil gang. He said, I went to the leader of the God gang and the leader said, and I said to the leader of the God gang, how old do you have to be to be a part of God's gang? And the leader said, it used to be 21, but now it's 12. Amen. He's 12 years old. He says, dad, does it mean anything to me? And I said, yeah, I think so. I think you're to be about your father's business at age 12, like Jesus. Don't waste your teenage years. Don't waste your teenage years. Seven months before this call that took place with 400,000, in which we told nobody who the speakers were or the worship teams, we said it's not a festival, it's a fast. That prophets are forged in the deserts of fasting, not in the deserts of feasting. And my son came to me in January of, two, of 2000 and said, Dad, I want to be a Nazarite to the call. The Bible says in Amos 2.11, I raised up from among your young men prophets and among your sons Nazarites. Is this not true, O Israel? God raises them. They were raised up in the time of the greatest apostasy of Israel by their passion and their purity, by their sacrifice and their desire, they shifted a nation and turned it back to God. Samuel, a supernatural prophet. Samson, supernatural power. John the Baptist, supernatural preaching. And these guys were raised up, but it's not just for guys. Numbers chapter six, verse two says, if a man or a woman desires to make a special vow of a Nazarite, they would not cut their hair it was a sign of their strength. The Nazarites were saying by the length of their hair, they were saying, not how little can I get away with and still be a Christian? They were saying, how far will you let me go? How abandoned will you let me be? They grew their hair, they would not drink wine, eat grapes, raisins, anything of the seed not because it was wrong, but because they were to be possessed by a different spirit. They were not to be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And what they were saying is, we have only so much capacity, listen to me, for passion. When the Bible says you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength, it doesn't leave a whole lot of room yeah. for passion. We share our passions with a million things. But God says, I'm gonna raise up a generation who even give away the legitimate pleasures of this life for the extreme pleasures of knowing God. Numbers chapter five, it's called the law of jealousy. Yeah. 
or a bridegroom is jealous over his wife that was unfaithful. And it was a test to the faithfulness of the bride. And it is about a generation that had committed adultery with the world. But the next chapter, listen to me, was the law of the Nazarite. God is jealous for a bridal people filled with passion. And that vow, the vow of the Nazarite in one sense was a marital vow. I have a sense today there's gonna be a marriage. There's gonna be a transaction. This message we preached and 400,000 kids gathered to that sound. Now listen to me. My son came to me seven months before the call. And he said, Dad, I want to be a Nazarite to the call. I don't want to cut my hair for seven months. Then he said, Dad, I want to fast for 40 days. 13 years old. On juice and smoothies. Thank God for smoothies. I'm thinking the kid's having a growth spurt. He's going to shrink. He's 13. Then he said, Dad, and after that fast, I don't want to eat meats or sweets until the call. I'm thinking, what am I going to say to this kid? I don't want to play baseball this year. I just want to run with you, Dad, and pray for revival. 13 year old. And I'm thinking as I go to bed that night, what do I tell this kid? I didn't have to wait long to find out. Because at four o'clock, listen to me, four o'clock in the morning, God woke me with his audible voice. It's happened to me three times. And it said this, America is receiving her apostles, her prophets and evangelists, but it has not yet seen her Nazarite. And I knew there was a new breed of kid coming to America that was committed to turn a nation back to God. Brothers and sisters, this was 22 years ago. And when he stood in front of 400,000 people, you're going to watch this video. He prayed a prayer. That prayer was videoed and it was sent to the Philippines. A youth group watched the video and the Spirit of God fell on it. And it launched a movement with 150,000 people gathering to fast and pray. It exploded all over the Philippines, into Southeast Asia, and literally around the world. A Nazarite in seven months shifted the world. What could happen today? For a generation that says we will set our, part, our hearts apart to bridal love to separate those things that keep us from burning. It's called the Nazarite vow. I have in my hand a book. I wrote it 22 years ago called the Nazarite DNA, but they've changed the title for today. It's called the Z vow. Maybe this Nazarite moment, this vow could be the vow for Generation Z. Maybe this is the moment that men and women will consecrate themselves to see America turn back to God. I prayed in 1999, how can I turn America back to God? I can't help but thinking I'm looking at the answer. I'm looking at the answer. It's the Z vow. We have 400,000 copies. My ministry has paid for it. I'm not boasting. I wanted to give a seed. We're going to run this book all through this place. 400,000. How many of you feel your heart burning inside? Even as I speak it, there is a deep. I want to give you permission to be who you already know you are. You're different. You're not like this culture. I want you to listen and watch this video. This is my son, Jesse, praying 
but 400,000 kids. asking you necessarily to do that kind of vow because really it's revel it's actually Romans 12 2 12 2 therefore because of the mercies of God present your bodies as a living sacrifice to God it's a marital vow of love I give you my body God may put his finger on things in your life that keep you from burning you don't have to do it it's voluntary it's not legalism it's love i had a dream the day after the call i told a young man beforehand that night there's more revelation to be given concerning the call and in this dream that night god answered that prayer and i dreamed and a scroll rolled down before me and i read number six two listen to this if a man or a woman desires to make a special vow of the nazareth and in the dream the word desire how, how can you say it leaps off the page into my heart and instantly i realize it is not the young man who's doing the desiring it's god who is desiring is desiring the desire in your heart is put there by a God who is burning for separated lovers and in the dream I begin to pray for my sons God hotly pursue Jesse hotly pursue Josiah hotly pursue Jonathan hotly pursue Jacob hotly pursue jo Gloria hotly pursue Christy hotly pursue Samuel and God has put on my heart to give a prayer to a generation. And right now, all over this place, I want you to lay your hand on your heart. And in where do you feel this burning inside? And you want this Nazarite burn that God said about Jesus, his son, uh, John the Baptist. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you enjoyed his light for a little while. Oh, that it would be said of Gen Z. They were not the last generation or the lost generation. They were a generation that burned for God. And would you just even kneel down if you can? This is an altar call. Look at me, look at God. Lay your hand on your heart. Say, Lord, seal me. Pray it with me, seal me with the inward fire. I'm coming tonight, today, to make a holy vow. I am yours. Would you lift your voices and pray, God, hotly pursue me. Just begin to pray, hotly pursue me. No, I want you to pray and I want you to cry to God. Hotly pursue me. Hotly pursue Gen Z. Hotly pursue. 